Hey everybody, this is Chad from Sticks Blog. I'm Stick, and uh, I'm getting ready to do another hike, and I just wanted to do a quick little video and show you uh, what I'm going to be carrying on this hike and how I'm going to pack it in my pack. Um, just so you know, the hike that we're going to be doing, me and a buddy is going to be doing the uh, Foothills Trail, uh, which runs about 76, 77 miles between South Carolina up into North Carolina again. Uh, it starts at Table Rock and it ends at Oakneath. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, but anyway, we're going to be doing that. Uh, uh, we're looking at doing it in uh, just under three days. Uh, two nights, three days is what we're looking at doing it. Uh, and then depending on how things go, we may just set up camp for the third night just to camp out. And then just hop in our car, uh, you know, the next morning and drive home. Um, looking at the extended forecast right now, uh, which is still a few days out, so it could change. Um, but looking at the extended forecast right now, it's looking like um, it's going to be kind of cloudy the few days that we're out there. Um, looks like the high temperature is going to be about mid to low 80s, and the lows um, are going to be uh, low 60s, and that's for Table Rock State Park. There's not a whole lot of high elevation there, so I'm counting on, if, if that weather forecast is true, I'm counting on temperatures low in about 50s. Um, low 50s. So uh, what I've got here is I've got stuff that I feel like I can get by with uh, comfortably uh, in low 50s and if it dips down to the 40s um, I can still get by. Um, might be a little bit cool here or there but we'll just have to see how it goes. So anyway uh, we'll start with my pack. Um, my pack is the Z-Pax uh, Zero. It's a small um, you've seen this pack before, it just has the one uh, front mesh pocket. Uh, on the back, I do have the, uh, go ahead and unbutton this stuff here. Uh, on the back, I do have the uh, Gossamer Gear sit light pad. I have it attached with uh, just a little cord, um, not a whole lot there. Uh, on the shoulder straps, I've got little bungees and stuff to hold my water bottles, because I'll carry my water bottles on my shoulder straps. Um, and other than that, there's no additions to this backpack. So, um, the first thing that I will put in my backpack is my Neo Air. And this is the uh, x light. It's the large x light, so it's uh, 77 inches long, uh, 25 inches wide according to spec. And the first thing that I do is I put it in the back of my backpack. Like so. Make sure it's lined up the way I want it to be. And that's going to help provide a little bit of structure uh, for the pack. Of course, this uh, sit light pad is also going to provide some structure, but I'll go ahead and take, I can take that sit light pad out and it won't change a thing. Uh, because the way that I pack everything in here, uh, it makes the pack rigid. Uh, next, I'm going to use a pack liner, which is the Light Trail uh, pack liner. It's uh, uh, made from the same material as the Nilo barrier bags, the overproof bags. Uh, basically it's just a bigger bag. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Uh, I'm taking my Black Rock Gear down hat because I'm going to be using a quilt. Go ahead and throw that in there. Um, these are just some uh, Capilene 2 uh, long sleeping pants. Go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, just because if my pants get dirty, I don't want to wear my pants, uh, dirty pants uh, to sleep in. Uh, next, I just have a thin pair of uh, liner socks, and these go up to about mid calf. So, throw those in there. Uh, then I have my uh, pillow, which is my Exped Ultralight, the large pillow. And then I have the uh, Goose Feet Gear Stuff Sack pillow uh, that it's inside. I love this setup. I've, uh, this is absolutely the best setup I've had. Uh, it does weigh like three. Um, to waste like 3.6 ounces for everything, but it's well worth it. So let's go ahead and shove that down in there. And then next is going to be my 50 degree uh, enlightened equipment quilt. Um, my carry quilt. Um, I don't use a stuff sack or anything on it. Um, I don't have any cords or anything like that. Um, the only thing, it just has the draw cord at the foot box. It has snaps that go so far up the, uh, the foot box. And then other than that, it has a snap around the collar and it's got a drawstring around the collar. Um, go ahead and 
just stuff that right in there. And I really like stuffing stuff like this because in the mornings, whenever you're trying to get ready to go, boy, it makes it so much easier and faster to just be able to stuff stuff in there instead of having to try and stuff it into a little little uh, stuff sack or a dry sack or anything like that, trying to stuff that in there. And uh, it, it's just so much easier. But anyway, that's all that I'm going to put inside my, my pack liner. So what I'll do now is I'll just kind of pull my pack liner together, kind of twist it a few times. I'm going to push, push a lot of the air out. And then just kind of twist it. And once I twist it, it'll form like an elephant trunk. And then I just take that trunk and I shove it down. I know you can't see this, but I'm shoving the trunk down towards the front of my pack. And that makes it waterproof enough. It doesn't make it watertight. You know, if I was to fall in a river or something like that, water could get in there. But if it's just going to rain or anything like that, um, I'm not concerned at all. Also, I will say that with this pack, um, I've turned this thing inside out. And I've got Cuban fiber tape. I've taped all the seams on the pack. So while I don't think it's waterproof, it's, it's very water resistant. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. Next is my boar bibby. And I just have it inside this uh, Cuban fiber stuff sack. It's an oversized stuff sack, which I'm fine with that. Um, reason being is if uh, I'm using this without a ground sheet or anything, so if this thing gets dirty and nasty, I don't want to be trying to wad it up real small, trying to fit it into a stuff sack that it just fits in. I'd rather have something a little bit bigger that I can kind of cram it in and just be done with it. Um, also, with it being like this, I can fold it flat and it fits inside my pack. I just lay that right on top of my, uh, my pack liner where I folded it over. Uh, this is just a do-it-yourself Reflectix food cozy. Uh, I freezer bag cook, uh, so I just made this little food cozy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove this um, right along. It's going to be standing up inside my pack like, like this, right behind. Or it's going to be actually between the... Uh, my Neo Air and my uh, the I know I lost words. My pack liner, with all my stuff in it that just kind of stands up in the middle. Okay, and then as you can see right now, I'm about here in my pack with all my stuff. And actually, this stuff is pretty loose. Uh, I've, I found in the past that. The heavier stuff, I like for my heavier stuff to ride closer to at least the middle to up uh, towards the top. I don't like having heavier stuff down towards the bottom. Uh, this backpack does not have a hip belt. Uh, I can attach one, but I choose not to. Um, but I like for my heavier stuff to ride higher up. It just seems like the pack rides so much better for me. Um, but I have found that with the heavier stuff up top, over time, as I'm walking, it's going to kind of compress everything up underneath it so it will kind of fall down a little bit but you know that's that's just part of it so next is my food bag uh, this is my food bag here um, this has got all of my food except for my first day snacks and lunch and real quick what I want to do is I just want to weigh this food bag separately and that weighs four pounds twelve point well, four pounds, it's going between four pounds, 12.1, and 12 ounces even. So four pounds, 12 ounces. Uh, four and three quarter pounds is what my food bag weighs. Um, and this is going to be the hardest part for me to get inside my pack. Um, and it, it's just going to have to be that way. Um, you know, after I eat my food for the first day, uh, it's going to be shorter, so it'll make it much easier to get inside my pack. But I definitely struggle with this more than anything else. And I just try to lay it uh, sideways. Like I said, I struggle with this more than anything else. Um, I do have other food banks that I could use, but uh, all my food fits in this one, and it fits well inside my backpack. 
helping to make it rigid. So there we have it. I'm about here. Uh, you know, my food bag actually kind of pressed everything down just a little bit. Like I said, everything's going to fall. But anyway, that's where I'm at right now. And like I said, I'm putting everything in here and it's making a rigid pack. So I could definitely get by without using this on the back too. This is not really providing any rigidity. Um, it's actually just a creature comfort. <laughs> but anyway, so I got that in there. Next is my tarp. Uh, this is the Z-Pax Texamid Solo Plus tarp. Uh, and just a stuff sack, you can throw a stuff sack. Put that in there next. Uh, this is my cook kit. This is the uh, 0.9 liter Evernew uh, short wide pot um, with a uh, do-it-yourself tie foil lid. And then I've got the uh, Sidewinder Caldera cone that matches the pot and the Starlight stove inside there. And uh, put that in there. I've got my ditty bag. Uh, and I'm not going to, this has just got my first aid kit, uh, my repair kit. Uh, my hygiene stuff. Uh, got my little uh, Spyderco Ladybug, which is new. Uh, that's awesome. Hold on. I'm not going to take it out. But anyway, uh, that's just my Diddy Bank stuff. I'll go ahead and throw that in there. Next, I have my um, Cloud Kilt, just a rain kilt. Uh, this will serve as a couple of different functions. You know, of course, it can serve as a rain kilt or it can serve as like a front and door mat or something on my tarp. Um, just lots of different things. Uh, and then I have my MLB 475 milliliter mug, um, which is definitely my favorite mug by far. And my hot lips, and I just dropped on the floor. Stick that back on. And then I just stick my foul kill inside there, kind of it'll take up a little room. I don't have to. Work this Got in there. And then last that's going inside is my uh, Luke's Ultralight Seal Nylon Rain Jacket. And I'm putting it inside because I'm not expecting rain. If I am expecting rain, um, it's going to be on the very top of the inside of my pack. I could just, uh, if it looks like it's going to be raining, I can stop and take it out, shove it down in the front of my pack. That way I've got a lot of easier access to it. I don't have to worry about opening my pack. Um, but anyway, just stuff that in there. And then that's pretty much everything that's going on the inside of my pack. So I'll go ahead and pinch that down. And as you can see, I have filled my pack up to the top. And I like to do that because I found that a pack that's filled up um, seems to ride better than a pack that I try and put everything in and then try and compress the sides and compress, you know, vertical. Um, if I can just fill it up, it seems like it rides a lot better. And uh, that's what I've managed to do. Um, that's part of the reason why some of the stuff I've put inside that I could have put outside. Um, but anyway, that's just the way I do it there. So I'm going to leave it up here. Uh, now there's not a whole lot of stuff that I'm going to be putting outside the pack. Uh, partly because I like to try and keep as much stuff inside the pack, like I said, because it helps with the rigidity and it helps with the way it rides. Uh, but also because uh, I don't know, you know, I may need this. If I pack up a wet tarp, I'm probably just going to pack it in the front. And everything that's in the front will probably end up going inside, uh, or my rain jacket or something like that. Um, so the first thing I have is my fuel for my stove, and I just have it in a little four ounce uh, bottle. Um, it's got the flip top on it, and I just have it in a little snack size Ziploc bag just in case it does leak. I will say that I've never had issues with one of these leaking, uh, either through the flip top or through the lid. But you always do got to make sure that the flip top is flipped down completely closed and the lid is tight. Uh, also, I do make sure that I store it standing up, so you know I'm just not giving as much opportunity to leak if it does. Uh, I have all my tent stakes and my steak bag. I'm throw that in there. Um, my REI long handle tie spoon. Uh, I love this thing, uh, not because it's titanium, just because the long handle. I freezer bag cook, and when you freezer bag cook, a long handle is just you know it stuff awesome. Uh, I got some toilet paper. Got uh, this is a head net, see the summit head net inside just a little wallet, uh, Z Packs Cuban Fiber wallet stuff sack. Um, I'm looking at ordering one of the Peter's head nets uh, just because uh, I hear so many things about uh, they breathe better um, and because you can see through them better. 
Um, so I'm going to look at getting one of those pretty soon. Um, not so much the weight. I do think it weighs just a little bit less than the Cedar Summit, but maybe like a tenth or two tenths of an ounce. Not saying that I'm not looking forward to dropping more weight, but um, it's not the weight is not what I'm wanting to get it for. Um, it's the ability to see through it better and to breathe through it better because um, I have found that the Cedar Summit um, it can get kind of muggy inside it. Um, so I'm looking at it. Uh, but anyway, I've got my Everdeen 1.5 liter bladder, and this is going to be a dirty bladder. That's why I'll fill up all my water in. Then I have my Sawyer Squeeze, and I do have a push-pull top on it because the way I use this is I'll fill my Everdeen bladder up, I'll put it on the back, and then I'll squeeze it out. And I like having this push-pull top, well, if I can get the lid off, um, because it fits better. It kind of gives me a better aim something to it makes it where I can aim better into my Gatorade bottles. Uh, also, uh, if I'm at camp or something, I can set the, uh, the bag on a table or hang it from something if I'm able to. And uh, this push-pull top will act like a shut-off valve. So I can just leave it there and when I'm ready to use it, pull the top. When I'm done, push the top. And it just makes it more convenient. So I've got that. And the last thing I'm gonna put in my pack is my Zebra Light. Uh, H51, still love this thing. Uh, it's got your do-it-yourself headband on it. Works great. And I just stick that in there. And uh, that's pretty much it. What I did here is just kind of make sure everything is down. Put this little loop at the bottom here. Put a half hitch in it. that folds the top open because this is the sink sink so it'll fold the top open so if it is raining rain can't fall directly down in there and uh and that's pretty much it we'll say it's kind of bulging just a little bit i need to work on it a little bit but anyway that's uh that's the gist of it um real quick i am going to weigh this put this on the scale just to show you how much it weighs but some of the other things of course i've got my gatorade bottles with my water bottle holders i've got two of those and those will ride on my shoulder straps. And then I've got my multi-pack. Uh, my multi-pack, I've got the waist belt on it. And I'll wear it like a fanny pack. And just kind of show you what I have inside there. Uh, first off, I've got my Joby Gorilla Pod. And I'm still debating on camera, which camera I'm gonna bring, and uh, which tripod unit I'm gonna bring. I've got, um, right now, this is my Lumix SZ7. Uh, it's a good little camera. It's not the best. I replaced it with the camera I'm actually using to shoot right now, uh, the Lumix GF2, and I love it. Um, however, I'm not this trip. I'm going to be hiking. Um, it looks like the first day is going to be uh, around 30 miles. The first two days is going to be around 30 miles, either way we look at it. And then the last day is going to be uh, about 17 to 20, something like that. So I'm going to be doing a lot of hiking during the day, so I'm not really going to be taking time to stop and do a lot of, you know, photography and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm thinking about just carrying the smaller camera just because it's smaller, it's lighter. Um, but the battery life on it sucks compared to the one that's there. I may end up taking that, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, for right now, I've got my camera, my Gorilla Pod. Um, and this is the way I've got my food. I've got all my snacks and my lunch inside here. Um, and each day will be like this. I'll put the, I've got a, everything in a Ziploc bag. I'll shove in my multi-pack. So I've got, uh, right there, I can access it really easy. I ain't got to go digging through my pack to get to my food each day. Um, and inside here, basically, I've got um, two ounces of jerky. I've got a fresh pack of crackers. I've got a bunch of Starburst. I've got two ounces of mixed nuts. Uh, and then I have three of the fuel bars. They're strawberry and blueberry. Um, and that's basically my snacks and my lunches each day. Uh, and just so you know, that's about uh, 1,500 calories is what total is in this bag. So I'm hoping that'll be enough. Um, this is new. Just figured I'd try it. This is a little, um, I can't remember, mole, mole skin, mole skin. Uh, it's just a little tablet. I've got a little mechanical pencil in there. Uh, and it's inside a, uh, uh, lock sack and also if it does rain this camera if I can't carry this camera will go inside with this so that it keeps it from getting wet 
And then I have the map. This is the trail map for the Foothills Trail. And yes, it is the huge, big trail map. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, if it works, it works. But anyway, all this will ride, like I said, in my multi-pack. And so I've got quick access to those things. Should I need them? And those are things that I will use throughout the day. And then last is my clothes. Uh, I've got my Outdoor Research Sunrunners cap. Um, I've only used this a couple times, but I think I'm going to like it so far. And I have treated all my clothes with permethrin. Um, these are just some stoic uh, ankle socks is all it is. Merino wool, nothing special about those. Um, this is my Cobra Braid uh, paracord bracelet. And I will say one thing I did is it, it had like a big horseshoe buckle with a pin that you would actually close this up with. Um, and I actually took that buckle off and put just a piece of shock cord in there um, so that I can, it makes it a lot easier to get on and off. I can just kind of slide it over my wrist rather than trying to fumble with getting that pin through everything and all that stuff. And uh, anyway, that works. Of course, I'll have my, uh, my Sunto core. I'll wear my watch. Um, this is just one of the uh, the screen the storm whistles. Uh, thanks to Brian Green for sending that. And I've got a little photon micro light. These will stay in my pearl pants pocket. Um, just my belt. Uh, this is the cape for my hat. Uh, this is Mountain Mountain Hardware uh, Wicket Light T-shirt. Uh, just some Under Armour boxer briefs, and then my Columbia uh, Silver Ridge zip off pants. And that's the clothes that I'm going to be wearing each day. Um, I want to say also my rain jacket. I do plan on using my rain jacket as sleep gear if I need to. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to need to. We'll just see how that goes. Uh, but it's my extra top layer uh, because I don't have, a, you may have noticed, I'm not bringing a long sleeve shirt. I'm just bringing long pants and socks and a cap to sleep in. I'll sleep in my hiking shirt. Um, and then like I said, if I get cold or something, I can throw my, uh, my rain jacket on over that. Also, I will be inside the Bora Bibby, um, and I'm going to be up in there about that because it uses the M90 uh, top layer, and nothing against the construction or anything. I love the Bora Bibby, um, but that M90, it just doesn't hardly breathe, um, and, and that's giving it some room, I think. But I'm going to use it again on this trip and just see how it does. Um, if I end up with a lot of condensation again, I'm probably going to make a modification to it. Uh, or I may end up selling it and just buy another one uh, with a couple of different things done to it. Uh, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this camera and I'm going to put my pack on the scale and just show you how much my pack weighs. Um, just, uh, just to let you know, uh, my pack weight, um, my base pack weight was about 6.7 pounds. Um, and then you saw my food weighed 4 and 3 quarter pounds. So my total weight should be about 11 pounds uh, that, of all this stuff here, somewhere around 11 pounds. Um, I can't remember how much my clothes weighs, maybe something like 52 ounces. Of course, I'm going to be wearing my uh, Innovate Rocklight 315 Trail Runners is what I'm going to be using. Um, my Gatorade bottles, I think they weigh like 43 ounces together, full. And my multi-pack, I'm going to say it's somewhere around 2 pounds with the food. Uh, the day, a full day's food in it. So anyway, let me get everything set up and I'll do that. Let's hang on. Okay guys, uh, go ahead and weigh some things here for you. Um, first I'll start with the uh, Gatorade bottles. Um, you can see it's 46 ounces. Um, and that uh, includes, of course, the weight of the bottles with the, uh, um, the, uh, the bottle holders that are attached to it. And of course, you know, all the fluid inside it. So 46 ounces for that, um, which uh, 1,305 grams or 2 pounds 14 ounces for my water. And those are going to be hanging on my shoulder straps, one on each. Um, so a pound 7 ounces on each shoulder strap. Um, next is going to be my multi-pack with everything that I just showed you inside it and it actually comes to one pound 10.5 ounces I hope you can see that 
Uh, but anyway, one pound, 10.5 ounces. Whoops, my straps just fell off. That's the fun part, trying to get stuff on these scales. Um, or 26.5 ounces or 751 grams. Um, real quick, just to show you everything I'll be wearing. Um, of course, well, it's going to be kind of hard to see there. Um, looks like it's one pound, 9.7 ounces. I'm not going to fold that a whole lot. It's about one and a half, one, you know, one and a half pounds of clothing. Not counting my shoes. And then my pack. This is going to be the fun part, getting this to balance. Okay. There's my pack. It comes at 11 pounds, 0.2 ounces. Like I said, that's my food, and that's everything that you saw me just put inside the pack. Um, 176.2 ounces, 4,995 grams, um, 4.994 kilograms or 11 pounds, 0.2 ounces. So uh, that's not too bad, I don't think. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, as far as the food concerned, I will say that that is, uh, uh, as far as the food concerned, that is three full days of food, uh, plus an extra morning of food. Um, well, let me just say three full days because the first morning I'm planning on eating a biscuit or something on the way to the trail. Um, so it's three full days of food. Uh, I can't remember. I want to say it's around 7,500 to 8,000 calories total for all the food. And uh, that should be, some people may say, well, if you're going to be hiking 30 miles a day, you may need more calories than that. Um, I've got plenty on reserve. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to the hike. Uh, I uh, feel pretty comfortable with the gear that I've got, and uh, just looking forward to it. So guys, I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments or questions, just feel free to post them at the bottom of this video or on my blog page, and I'll do my best to answer those questions or reply to your comments. And uh, guys, I appreciate you for uh, all your support, for, for watching all my videos. I know they're real long, and uh, reading my blog posts and stuff like that, and just for your continued support. For all the likes on my Facebook page, I appreciate that. And... Uh, Guys, I just appreciate everything you do. Talk to you later. Bye.